let's go ahead and talk about Justin Karras as a player. In that 2016 year was a huge year for him, finishing top eight at the World Championships. 2017, he was alluding to as his year where he was very successful locally. He managed to work in a regional top eight in Madison and a day two at that World Championships as well. Of course, coming back in 2023, that is going to be the Knoxville Regional Top 8 a mere few weeks ago. Uh, his team, for those of you that haven't seen it, it's Talon Tusk. That's what him and his friends have been working on so, so hard. Paired off with the Gothitelle Iron Bundle, the Fluttermane, and the Tyranitar. Yeah, but on the other side as well, when you take a look at Joseph Ugardi as an opponent, do have the top fours at NAIC and EUIC last year, a top 32 at the World Championships and just this past Oceania International Championships, getting that top 16. This team seems to be one he really gels with, looking at the King Gambit, Amoongus, Arcanine, Mimikyu, Iron Bundle, and Great Tusk. Yep. So let's go ahead and see how this is all going to shake out. Yeah, they are both lasered in on this matchup, knowing their way around it. It is going to be Mimikyu and Iron Bundle taking to the field for Joe Ugarte, with Justin Karras going with that Talonflame and Tyranitar lead. All right, so the sand is already going to be active here for Justin, just going to be able to have that as a special defense boost, which feels great in front of this Iron Bundle. Of course, the Talonflame here with the safety goggles isn't going to be affected by that sandstorm damage at the end of the turn, but this is where things get a little bit risky. Uh, Justin's team not necessarily known for having some more bulky options to be able to switch in, unless you are looking at that Gothitelle. So, this might be a little bit tough if you're trying to pivot the Talon Flame around to make sure that you're not getting caught out by a super effective Hydro Pump. Yeah, this is going to be tough because the Hydro Pump is going to be very impactful and Talon Flame already scared of that one. So leaving the field and switching in for an Iron Bundle of his own. Yeah, the other thing about that switch as well is that even if Talonflame wanted to be able to go for some of its utility, Tailwind's not really going to help the Tyranitar in this case be able to outspeed something like the Bundle. And because you know that you are looking at the Booster Iron Bundle as well, you're just looking at the speed tie here. So, Justin also going to go ahead and Terrastalize the Tyranitar to kick off this turn. Yeah, let's see if that comes back though, because there are obviously, of course, some pretty good ice attacks over on the side of Joseph Ugarte. The Hydro Pump, though, will be heading towards that Iron Bundle, so not very effective, not even getting it below half. And then it's going to be the Curse from Mimikyu. So it cuts its own HP down in half and puts a Curse on it. The Tyranitar Rock side, though, will connect with both sides of the field. So Iron Bundle bought low, and the Disguise popped on Mimikyu. Yeah, so that... It is going to start to whittle away though at the Tyranitar when you take a look at the curse a little bit later. But you can see the Sandstorm damage coming through first, so Pokemon are all going to be affected by that, especially even the Tyranitar there that has Terrastalized to the Flying type. And there is the curse damage just consistently going to chunk away at this Tyranitar's HP. Yeah, the Tyranitar would be a great Pokemon to try and kind of clean things up with right now. But I don't know if it's going to be given that many opportunities to do so as it ticks away to the curse. The flying type there, you know, didn't really help it out so much. Would have potentially got it away from like a, you know, being super easily knocked out or taking more damage from a hydro pump. But a great switch there by Justin Karras to bring in, of course, his own iron bundle and take that hydro pump with a plomb. Well, Joe is going to go ahead and go for Protect there onto the Mimikyu as Tyranitar has to take this Hydro Pump. So the Freeze Dry from Justin's Iron Bundle will not be able to pick up the Knockout onto the Mimikyu. Rock Slide coming up from the Tyranitar. This is going to be risky. Will be able to hit the Iron Bundle here. And yes, it does connect and get the Knockout. Yep, easy Knockout on the Iron Bundle. It was already nice and low from the first Rock Slide. Had taken a little bit of damage and will just get knocked out by that one. So Iron Bundle uh, down for Joe. That's one of his big attacks has actually taken off this matchup really, really early on. That's something that, you know, does do with that Talon Flame really nicely, right? Does cause those problems. But Tyranitar is getting lower and lower. The curse has brought it so, so low. And potentially in range for something like this Mimikyu to tidy it up with the Shadow Sneak. So uh, that could be an angle for him here. Iron Bundle as well, you know, already down to about half. Uh, could struggle a little bit here to, to get too much done. Yeah, I mean, at this point, though, with the Tyranitar being on a timer, you're trying to get as much damage out as possible. As Iron Bundle goes for the Protect, but it's up to the response here from Joe. The Shadow Sneak into the Tyranitar is enough to be able to pick up the Knockout here. And so we are going to have both trainers down a Pokemon. Yep, down three and three 
in this one. But a full health King Gambit's got to be feeling pretty good. Uh, Mimikyu is losing health rapidly. King Gambit does go for the Sucker Punch. Uh, don't forget that Mimikyu is losing health not only through its life orb, but also to the sand as well. So able to get bought really, really low. Uh, trying to kind of make, a, I guess, an awkward pin here. Now, that said, I can see the last two Pokemon for Justin, and that is definitely something he's going to be looking at relying on. My big question is, can this King Gambit put in the work that it's been doing over the course of this whole set, or whole tournament, sorry, for Joseph Ugarte? I mean, the Talonflame looks really set up for success here. If you want to try to damage it with the King Gambit and the Mimikyu, you have to go for priority options. But Talonflame at this point might want to go for something a little bit more supportive. You have access to things like will o -Wisp, Tailwind, Taunt. And so if you're trying to get the damage down on the Talonflame, maybe you are going to expect that. But What's this? Yeah, the Iron Bundle switching out, so we're going to reveal that Great Tusk as the fourth. The one thing that concerns me here is if this, uh, for, you know, if you're Joe, you know, we saw him locking into those Sucker Punches. Uh, not going to go for that this turn. Scared of potentially like Will-O-Wisp coming through and the Sucker Punch failing and getting burned for his troubles. But let's see what he does in exchange. He has given up that Sucker Punch, so there's much more to do. And it's just going to be an immediate assurance into Talonflame. And that is a lot of damage, considering it wasn't hit first. No, it wasn't, but it did use Brave Bird. So the recoil actually is enough to activate that two times damage coming in from the Assurance. So great call there from Joe, maybe being able to get extra damage down onto the Talonflame. But now Justin is looking at three Pokemon remaining. We do have two for Joe in that Great Tusk and that King Gambit, but Joe has yet to Terrastalize. Yeah, Joe hasn't used that. It was, of course, used on the Tyranitar to go Flying type. And guess what? Joe Ugarte is going Flying type on his King Gambit as well. That will make it a little bit weaker to the Iron Bundle that's in the back, but that Iron Bundle is also a little bit low already. Great Tusk protecting itself. Doesn't want to get caught by anything like the burn. Let's see how this turn shakes out. It's just dirt, both Great Tusk protecting. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately, that means that nothing can damage these Great Tusks. The Will-O-Wisp, though, going oh. to miss onto the King Gambit. But King Gambit going for the Terra Blast here into a protected Great Tusk. A little bit of a null turn here, but you are still looking at this Talonflame being able to affect both of your Pokemon. But these Great Tusks are pressuring so much damage. Yeah, the Great Tusks looking to try and, uh, you know, swing for the fences with these big earthquakes partnered up with flying types. That is obviously the easiest combination to get away with it. Um, if you don't have access to Earth Eater uh, or something like that to keep yourself safe from <laughs> it. Uh, telepathy would have worked too. But, you know, now this is a very precarious position. The big thing here is, you know, the focus really is on the Great Tusk. King Gambit, they're going for the Sucker Punch. He went for the Talonflame, so not going to be able to get that one. The Talonflame will land the Will-O-Wisp this turn. So I think Justin's been let off from that previous uh, attempt. Yeah, and I mean, the King Gambit's really the one that you want to keep in check as well. Knowing that Justin has the Iron Bundle in the back, it will be able to do that super effective special attack damage into the Great Tusk that already has very limited special defense. But we will see the Earthquake now come through as the Ice Spinner connected with Justin's uh, Great Tusk with the critical hit there too. That's going to be a lot of damage down onto Joe's Great Tusk. I think that Justin's put himself in such a good position here. That was a definite misstep from Joe, trying to suck a punch into the Talonflame after you just saw it attempt to Will-O-Wisp. So it feels like he's going to you know, get a little bit punished for that one here. And really, Justin doesn't have to worry about speed ties anymore. He's going to be able to set up this Tailwind completely free of charge and really start causing problems. So uh, the best thing about while he's Tailwinding again, can't get sucker punched. So this Talonflame is going to sit on the field for a really long time. Well, it's really good as well because he saw that Joe's Great Tusk was actually faster because it moved first mm. with the Ice Spinner. So the Tailwind going to really help make sure that Justin's going to be able to get that damage out first, especially when you're looking at being able to do another Earthquake, even anything. Headlong Rush, Close Combat might be enough here, but the Protect is really great to ensure that you are not going to get Sucker Punched here, and the Tailwind will definitely be helpful. Yep, there's no Sucker Punch coming through, but it wasn't the choice from this side. There is Great Tusk Ice Spinnering, though, into the Talonflame, but Talonflame's already done its job. It's been able to set up that Tailwind, and it's going to make things a bit of a nightmare here for Joe Ugarte. That is going to be a Terra Blast that isn't going to get anything done. It's heading into a Protect. But don't forget, that is also a Burned King Gambit, so not able to do the amount of damage you'd expect to see from it. That said, you know, it is now 2-2. Two to two. Both the Pokemon on uh, Justin's side are rather low, uh, while the King Gambit is at quite a large amount of health. So the big thing here is King Gambit, I think, needs to be uh, about 112% accurate on where it puts Sucker Punches. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. But even when it's burned, I'm not sure how much damage it's going to be able to do to either the Great Tusk or the Iron Bundle. An Iron Bundle here as well has a really nice opportunity to go for a knockout, but maybe is trying to read into a Protect, potentially. It's going to be a freeze dry into the King Gambit. Not quite enough to be able to knock it out, but the close combat to follow it up oh. isn't enough either. That's that going to be a huge defense fall here for this Great Tusk. Yeah, that is full send on the King Gambit from Justin Karras, and it's not enough. That is going to be the uh, <laughs> the really impressive hold on by this King Gambit, and that is why you give it the Assault Vest, because that Freeze Dry did not do enough. Iron Bundle is now felled, and King Gambit, while it may have been burned, is still going to be free to Terror Blast this turn. So going after the Great Tusk, it is going to be enough for the knockout, and even after a very precarious mid-game, Joe Ugarte moves up 1 and 0. Really great stuff for this game number one. Both trainers just recognizing that their way through this match is going to be having to make some calls and responses. They're waiting for the leads to hit the field. Joe Ugarte leading with the Iron Bundle and the King Gambit. Well, it's going to be Fluttermane and Talonflame coming out from the side of Justin Karras. So he's sticking with this Talonflame lead, but it's facing off against the uh, th that side of the Iron Bundle once again. This Fluttermane's new. We didn't see that last game, but what's it going to be able to get done? Yeah, I mean, this is really where you're trying to put a lot of emphasis into the special attack investment here of the Flutter main. King Gambit, though, as you called out with the Assault Vest, it's going to be able to tank a lot of the hits here from that Flutter main and even be able to pressure back with some super effective damage coming through from the Iron Head. So even the Sucker Punch here going to be able to do quite a bit. This is really interesting that Justin's lingering here because it's such a tough choice, right? He's looking at this side of the board and he knows that the Iron Bundle uh, is going to be going faster, right? It does have the booster energy, so it's just going to be the fastest thing on the field. So he's like, okay, I want a Tailwind. But I also love getting that Will-O-Wisp burn down on the King Gambit because it helps out so, so much. He's feeling real confident about this play right now with the head nod as he gets the Tailwind for entirely free. So let's see how much can the Fluttermane do to capitalize off it. Yep. It's going to be a Sucker Punch from the King Gambit into the Fluttermane. Takes it to about half, but that still means that the Fluttermane is up. Unfortunately, going to Moonblast into the Iron Bundle that has protected. Yeah. So at least the speed, though, is now on Justin's side. Yeah, but then the King Gambit still has access to the Sucker Punch, right? And that Sucker Punch is going to keep threatening uh, if he's able to use it wisely. So it may be a situation where, you know, Justin's forced to pivot things around, wants to save that Fluttermane for a, a much better endgame position. You know, maybe let that King Gambit get worn down a little bit and, and start causing problems that way. Talonflame, though, you know, it's kind of in a, another great position where it could just try and Will-O-Wisp this King Gambit. My concern there, though, is if you go Will-O-Wisp, you're not using the Gale Wings ability, and you can get punished real quick for that, as we've seen a couple times this weekend. Yeah, I mean, the Iron Bundle with booster energy is still super, super speedy here. The King Gambit, though, using the Sucker Punch is not going to be able to connect thanks to the Switch and the Will-O-Wisp, but the Will-O-Wisp is going to miss again! Oh. No way! The Hydra Pump, though, on return! Tyranitar avoiding the attack! Uh, uh, these inaccurate moves giveth and inaccurate moves uh, taketh away. And as we've said a couple times, it's real simple when it comes down to these big games. They either hit or they don't. And that is the fairest solution that we've had from both trainers, I think, with one hitting or one missing and the other one missing. Yeah, well, it looks like as well, Justin has some really nice information that the Talonflame is in fact going to be faster than the Iron Bundle. With the Talonflame, yeah. Yes, <laughs> exactly. So I think that's a really great way for Justin to be able to capitalize on the speed that he has given over to his side of the field. And with a quick pivot here, you are going to be able to preserve that Gale Wings for later since it didn't take any damage. And now the Fluttermane gets a chance to come back in. It might be able to take some damage here. The Hydro Pump going to connect onto the Fluttermane. It actually doesn't get the knockout here. Tyranitar is able to rock slide in response. Not enough to pick up the Iron Bundle. It is going to connect onto the King Gambit, but the Iron Head still comes through. Tyranitar surviving for now. Yeah, Fluttermane getting felled by the Sandstorm, though. So that switch wasn't able to help things out too much there. The Iron Bundle will stick around after that rock slide. Will get buffed by the Sandstorm, of course. But this was potentially a big call from Justin banking on uh, this King Gambit going for the flying type terror. It was so impactful in the previous game. So you think, okay, you're gonna go flying type, I'm gonna hit you with a rock slide. Makes a lot of sense. That said, the Talonflame is now back in. The Talonflame is in this position to, you know, maybe try and get that Will-O-Wisp down again. Would go first over the King Gambit, right? Be able to just land that Will-O-Wisp before it makes any moves. And uh, so the Iron Bundle would be 
Asked once again, can you hit a Hydro Pump to try and deal with either of these Pokemon? This could come down to a matter of if moves connect or not. But here is the Terrestrialization, and it is going to be the King Gambit going flying this turn. Well, you still have to hope that those rock slides are going to hit if you are Justin. And you also saw the move selection there for the Talonflame. So the Brave Bird going to be able to move first because of that priority and just because Talonflame is faster in the Tailwind. So yep. Iron Bundle getting knocked out. And now it is a single target rock slide here as we have to see whether or not this is going to connect. The Sucker Punch, though, goes oh. first. It's not enough to be able to knock out the Tyranitar. So it's able to fire back with a rock slide. And there is the King Gambit getting taken down to a third of its HP. Less now, about a quarter, but Tailwind is over. Tailwind is done. And of course, uh, there is going to be, uh, oh no, the uh, the Talonflame with the safety goggles is still going to have access to the Gale Wings. I was expecting him to, to drop that, right? It brave birded. So uh, it actually did take okay. like one HP of recoil there. Uh, <laughs> I was about to see that. Yeah, it's so yeah. tiny. <laughs> it is very tiny. I think anyone would be able to miss that. I almost thought about that too. But now Great Tusk is going to be coming in for that Iron Bundle, Talonflame is still the fastest Pokemon on the field. So if you're really looking at it, maybe if there is a Rock Slide, there is a way. Talonflame, though, almost surely if it wants to, to be able to put that Tailwind back up or even go for something like the Will-O-Wisp. Yeah, I mean, the Talonflame could really lock, lock it down, but the King Gambit doesn't seem that threatening right now. You know, it's really low health. It's, it's not moving before the Tyranitar. If it gets the Tailwind back up, because Tyranitar has to be careful, the Sucker Punch would clean it up. Um, so this is going to be a tricky one. Oh, the, the Tyranitar just tries to go for it, so the Sucker Punch will connect here. Yep, you got the Sucker Punch now to be able to knock out this Tyranitar. Talonflame, though, will be able to connect this Will-O-Wisp, so Great Tusk not going to be able to have the damage output that you might hope if you are Joe. And, of course, with that Great Tusk being able to uh, go for the Ice Spinner here, yes, it's going to do some damage to the Talonflame, but maybe even more importantly, as you take a look at Joe's Great Tusk, it's Focus Sash. So this Burn now going to be able to take that away. Yeah, I mean, the Great Tusk mirror coming through, but it's not going to be a true mirror because it's going to be Life Orb versus uh, that Focus Sash as well. The Great Tusk on Joe's side really doesn't feel that impactful right now. Um, you know, it, it's going to be burned. It's going to struggle a little bit to really get the damage down that it needs. So uh, this King Gambit is once again the focal point, right? Like, can the King Gambit maybe deal with the Talonflame? It, it's an awkward situation, um, but Great Tusk would also be able to help out. So still a lot of work to do. I think Joe has been very hesitant to reveal his, his last Pokemon because it's probably the Pokemon that can just tidy up and win in the game. The Sucker Punches, though, have been hitting pretty hard this game. They definitely have, but the Talonflame going to be able to punch back with that Brave Bird knocks out this King Gambit and now it's down to these great tusks on the field we're gonna see how they interact here but I believe Joe's is just a touch faster so yep. the ice spinner into the talon flame will be able to take it pretty low here but with the earthquake now on the other side I mean this life orb damage definitely going to help here as you're looking now at Joe's great tusk to be in range of a headlong rush or a close combat yeah you want it to be just getting knocked out absolutely immediately the sandstorm's gone not that it really makes a difference oh interesting the Mimikyu coming through. Justin not looking particularly happy about that uh, because of how low that Talonflame is, right? Uh, this is really all or nothing. And you've got to hit that Mimikyu a couple of times to break the disguise. So I do think this is a fantastic thing to save for last for Joe Ugarte. Yeah, I mean, disguise is going to help keep that Mimikyu up. And of course, you really hope that the speed is going to be in your favor. But how does Joe decide to call potentially the final turn of this match? I think, honestly, though, the Mimikyu can just cause too many problems, right? At some point, you get to just Shadow Sneak the Talonflame, and it's all on your Great Tusk. Admittedly, your Great Tusk isn't burned, uh, but, you know, you've got Earthquakes that aren't going to get, you know, the, the requisite knockout. Now, it's spread damage as well. Uh, it's just so difficult right now. Well, this Terra for the ground Terra type onto the Great Tusk could help out a little bit here as we do see the Mimikyu has access to the Play Rough, but it's going to be the Shadow Sneak first into the Talon Flame. So going to be able to secure the knockout there before Justin is able to get this Tailwind active, but there's still some hope here. 
the Mimikyu going to be able to lose a little bit of its HP, but more importantly now, Justin landing this Earthquake onto it will be able to break its disguise. Yeah, and honestly, the damage output coming up from that extra uh, terrestrialization is going to be big. So this Great Tusk on Joe's side of the field is not safe from an Earthquake. And of course, uh, you know, there's going to be an issue if Mimikyu gets hit. It's not the bulkiest of Pokemon once that disguise is gone. It's kind of a pseudo bulk, right, that you have to get hit twice. Yeah, I mean, Mimikyu is still very powerful, though, especially with that Life Orb attached. So now it's about whether or not Justin can survive this next turn. Ice Spinner not going to do a whole lot of damage here, bringing that Great Tusk to about two thirds. Great Tusk gets to move now before the Mimikyu. And so the Earthquake connecting onto both Pokemon is yep. going to get the double knockout. Justin tying up this series, and we've got a game three on our hands. Yeah, that was absolutely crazy there. And I think the, the change up is like, you know, the, the Mimikyu being saved for the back was so, so dangerous. But, you know, just being able to lock in that Earthquake, right? Earthquake has actually been probably the most impactful move on this set because at this point, doesn't have to worry about targeting. Great plays in both games from both of these trainers. And the big thing here has been the Will-O-Wisps, right? The Will-O-Wisps have actually been really impactful for Justin Karras. I think getting that Will-O-Wisp down on the opposing Great Tusk made a lot more sense, but we've gone back to a different lead for Joe Ugarte. It's gonna be the Iron Bundle and the Mimikyu once again against the Fluttermane and Tyranitar combination for Justin. Yeah, just Justin looks pretty happy about this one. But the yep. Iron Bundle, it, yes, it's going to be the fastest Pokemon on the field right now, but with the Mimikyu showing its face now, you have an opportunity to potentially break its disguise, and you're not super worried, I think, at this point about the Shadow Sneak either, especially when the Flutter mains have been trained to be pretty bulky nowadays. Yeah, I think the, the big thing here is like you can just deal with Mimikyu, right? As long as you have access to something nice and early to break the disguise, you've got to be feeling real good about being able to follow up on it especially when the Pokemon you're trying to follow up on it with is a Tyranitar. So this whole turn is all about the Mimikyu as Iron Bundle is bailing out of this one. All right, it looks like it's just a double protect here from Joe, trying to play it safe, especially when you do have that Fluttermane with the Choice Specs item. So now you know exactly what Justin is going to use while this Fluttermane is currently on the field. Brought Tyranitar going for the Rock Slide as well. Just really nice spread damage just to be able to Get the job done. Oh, I think the big thing here as well with Justin locking in the Dazzling Gleam is, you know, based on what we've seen from Joe over the past couple of, uh, you know, games, what is that really that makes a safe and sensible switch out of this, right? Like, there's nothing that you really want to throw in early. I mean, just running down the team, it's like, okay, uh, it's going to hurt the Great Tusk pretty significantly. Uh, it's going to hurt the King Gambit pretty significantly. Um, and he hasn't been bringing much uh, Amoongus and Arcanine. So it uh, does feel like he's going to be putting himself in a very sticky situation if he tries to switch. Because this Choice Specs Fluttermane, uh, which is an adaptation Justin went for, uh, is obviously going to be feeling pretty good. Yeah, it's been a little bit since we've seen this oh, Fluttermane in action. And also, we're getting a Ghost Terra Mimikyu here on the field. That Ghost Typing is going to allow it to boost up some of these attacks, especially the Shadow Sneak here. But there's a Terra on the other side as well. We saw Justin lock into this Terra Flying Terranitar. Yep, that is going to be the uh, choice. So that does mean like something like King Gambit can't terrestrialize for the side of Joe Ugarte, which has been a big focal point of this team. Justin feeling pretty good, but this is going to be a big Shadow Sneak, by the way, because of the extra boost from that Terrestrialization. That is crazy for a priority move. That is so much damage there. The Iron oh. Butter with a Hydro Pump is going to miss the Flutter main, though. Now Flutter main gets to go for the Dazzling Gleam, and it's going to get the critical hit onto the Iron Bundle as well. Mimikyu's Disguise gets popped, and now it's vulnerable for this attack coming out from Justin's Tyranitar. Well, it is going to be a Rock Slide. Let's see what it does. It is going to be a miss! It's a miss for a miss once again in this turn, and Fluttermane will still... No! Hang on! It doesn't even go down! What happened in this turn? Oh my goodness, it felt like we were on a roller coaster there. Joe's Iron Bundle getting knocked out does allow him to have this switch into the Great Tusk, but that doesn't feel super good when you are in front of a terrifying Tyranitar. You can't hit it for super effective damage. Yes, maybe Q can go for the Shadow Sneak here. You will be able to get the knockout onto the Flutter Main, but it'll be a Protect first here from the Great Tusk, or just a double Protect so the Flutter Main knocks itself out. Yeah, I mean, you can make it a more informed decision, but then that also gives information over to Justin, right, that he's double Protecting. The, the Flutter Main 
just goes, all right, fine. I'll try the Dazzling Gleam. You know, you do not want the Great Tusk to be taking that Dazzling Gleam. So fair play to protect it there. But you get a little bit of information and you get to choose what you're bringing in, knowing that these two have just double protected as well, which is mm -hmm. like something you can go crazy in and try and punish a little bit. That said, uh, that is going to be probably another monstrous Shadow Sneak coming through. Um, obviously, I know it was super effective on the Flutter main, but uh, I still think it's going to be more than a chunk, would be fair to say, on some of these health bars. So a little bit of Sandstorm, that's fine. Uh, that's not the real damage I'm interested in in this game. Nope, I'm definitely looking at those Shadow Sneaks as well. I guess the good thing here is that Justin is going to be bringing in the Talon Flame, and so now it's about priority, priority, priority. Talonflame having a little bit of the edge there thanks to the Gale Wings if it decides to lock into a flying type attack. But this is really where you're starting to make some calls. What is in the back here for Joe? What is in the back here for Justin? What are they preparing for for that fourth and final Pokemon? Yeah, it's going to be a Tailwind to start things out. Uh, I think that's the safest play here, right? Like, stop messing around, uh, making sure that you win the Great Tusk Mirror. There is going to be the Mimikyu switch in. He can, he's annoyed. I can tell Justin's annoyed. He thought he was going to be able to catch that. And um, we'll see how this one works out. But Tailwind goes up, so you're still in a great position for next turn if you're Justin. And, of course, you are going to be able to uh, try and deal some damage. Tarantula's Rock Side, though, will be very, very lackluster against both of these Pokemon <laughs> as the Ice Spinner goes into the flying type of the Tyranitar. It's a good amount of damage getting it down. Yep, that's going to be a lot of damage onto the Tyranitar. And at this point, too, when King Gambit is right there, you're looking at the face of a Sucker Punch into this Tyranitar, which might be enough to be able to pick up the knockout. At least you have the Tailwind, but the Sucker Punch that could come through could be the end of this Tyranitar. Yeah, this is going to be so close. King Gambit, though, will Sucker Punch into it, and Tyranitar is down. You saw Justin gesture at the camera in that last turn. He thought about low kicking there. I know. And he's now going to have to kick himself as Tyranitar is felled. That does mean it's just Talonflame right now. The Wilmers will connect, though. So the Great Tusk is kind of taken out of the game for a little bit but I do think it's going to get some damage back on it in exchange. A nice little trade with another Ice Spinner back. So really, the damage profile on this team for Justin Karras is whatever is in the back. Uh, I think I know what it is, uh, because it's kind of the focal point of his whole team, right? <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe just a little bit there. Maybe just a little bit. It's also been a Pokemon that Justin has brought to our games this set. And so being able to put that on the field, especially in Tailwind as well, you know that you have the fastest Pokemon on the field, and this looks like such a great opportunity to be able to go for something like the Earthquake. You're not too worried about the Great Tusk here because it is burned, but it still has access to Ice Spinner. You don't want your Great Tusk to get hit by that. Yeah, I mean, the big thing here is I do think just Talonflame Great Tusk in the back should be able to start putting down huge amounts of damage, right? You can Earthquake for free, and you know that the King Gambit on the other side has no recourse to get away from this. That's been something that's been really big for him, is being able to go flying, avoid the opposing Earthquakes and headlong rushes, um, and force you into this weird close combat. This is a very slow turn from Joe, and Justin seems to be just going after this King Gambit does right the now. Does connect? Yep. Yes, it does. That's going to limit King Gambit's damage output and as Joe's Great Tusk went for the Protect it will not be affected by this next attack. It will be the Earthquake which is going to hit its mark onto the King Gambit that decided to not go for the Terra because it couldn't anymore and now this might come back to hurt Joe as it just gets knocked out here. A the cr critical hit. That King Gambit, I think Joe was banking on that being able to stick around and maybe get some damage down to put things in range for this Mimikyu but not able to do it. The Protect from Great Tusk there, uh, meaning it's not getting anything to do apart from take that damage. That King Gambit has got to be trained to be able to take those hits. Mimikyu comes back in, it Disguise is already popped, and this has got to be the focal point of the end game for Joe Ugarte. A critical hit just when he needed it most to really try and tie things up. Mimikyu does have access to Play Rough, Shadow Sneak, Curse, and Protect. The Great Tusks, very similar in nature, yeah, but you, Ice Spinner available for Joe. You just can't use Curse now. You, you bring yourself too low. I do think Shadow Sneak's got to be the play, because if you get caught by this opposing Great Tusk Earthquake, you're probably going down now. Your disguise is popped. But Justin, locking it in, looking and waiting for Joe's move and response. Let's see what they go for. Mimikyu 
taking his turn with the Protect. So Justin nodding along with that one, shaking his head. Let's see if he's able to cause some problems in return. Well, the Brave Bird hitting into the Protect. It leaves the Great Tusk vulnerable. It did not go for the Protect here. Earthquake coming out from Justin's Great Tusk first. It's going to end up hitting the Great Tusk on Joe's side. Already has a bit of damage to it, takes it to about half. But where is the follow-up? Just an Ice Spinner here. And Great Tusk hasn't had any of its defenses lowered. And it's also pretty physically bulky. So this is about attrition. The Tailwind has petered out but you still have access to set it up again. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing to stop him just doing that. And I mean, winning the Great Tusk Mirror is easy here. Yours is not burned if you're Justin, so you should be able to do that. The big thing here is, you know, will he be able to take knockouts? It's gonna be close. I can see him hovering these moves that lower your defenses too, and that is feeling really, really dangerous. As Mimiku goes for it, not it gonna get, get it. it. The double protect doesn't come through, so Talonflame is able to set up the Tailwind. And let's see where this damage comes from. The Great Tusk goes for the headlong rush. It's enough to pick up the knockout onto the Mimikyu, but it does drop its defenses in the face of this Great Tusk. It doesn't Is matter, it though. Is it going to be enough? But what about a critical hit? Uh, we don't know. It's a critical hit that's going to have to come at the opportune moment for Joe Ugarte. It is, of course, Life Orb Recoil. Let's see if he can stay in this game. It's going to be the Ice Spinner, and it's going to... Ooh, it did more than I expected, even with the defense drop. But at some point, this Great Tusk is going to be felled. I think Joe Ugarte had to go for the Shadow Sneak there, because at this point, his Great Tusk is going to be felled as he throws in the towel. Justin Karras will be your regional champion here in Charlotte. What a phenomenally fought finals at the Charlotte Regional Championships.